What's up guys? Back with another episode of Every Revit Tool. In this video we'll be talking about the coping tool. And this this is a tool that's primarily used for structure. I, I've only ever used it for structure and I believe it only does work with structure. Um, coping in this case is basically a way of trimming. You know, the way you might trim other objects in Revit, you would cope structure. So, to use the example we have, we've got a couple levels of walls. I'm going to go to the Structure tab here and hit Beam. And looking at this bar here, you, you can generally tell you what kind of instruction you're going to have to give the tool next. So right now, I've got a placement plane, and I, I want to either pick level 1 or 2, but since I'm going to uh, use this as an example, I'm using level 2. Um, you can actually define which type of structure this is going to be. I'm just going to call this a joist and you have the option of 3D snapping this together. If I choose that option I could basically uh, snap to multiple planes instead of right now being only forced into level 2. I'm going to just stay forced within level 2 just to keep that a bit easier. Um, I also have the option of chaining if I were going to draw multiple beams all at once. So right now I'm just going to draw one. I'm actually going to go to a top view here. And since I'm on level two, it's going to snap to the midpoint of these walls here. You can see I, it's just showing the nearest point, but this is actually the center of the wall. And as I drag this, you'll see that it gives me the option to select the midpoint. And I'm just going to select somewhere random here, and it's going to draw the beam just like that. And I'm going to go to this wall here, and again, I'm, I'm still on the level 2 plane. And I'm going to select somewhere like right there. And it's going to default to the center of the beam. And so when it does that, if I pan around here, you can see, all right, great. I've got, I've got these, these two beams in here, although they're not really connecting how beams really should. They're, they're just kind of butting up against each other, which isn't quite what we want. We, wanna, we want this a little more accurate. So I'll cover a bit how to, how to hide some walls. Um, I'm going to hover over this wall, hit tab to select them all, and you can see if I press control, I, I get this plus sign over my cursor. And I, if I do that, I, it allows me to select all those walls. And again, if I hit control, you can see over the cursor I get this plus sign. So it's essentially asking me what do I want to add to this selection. So right now I'm going to click this wall, this wall, and this wall. And now that I've got these walls selected, I can choose to hide them, delete them, whatever. I don't want to delete these, I just want to hide them in the view currently. Um, so I can right click, go to hide in view and hit elements, or I can select these walls again, and I can hit EH on my keyboard, and that is the same as hiding, hiding selection. So I'm going to undo that again and show one more way of uh, essentially isolating these two, these two beams in this case, and there's actually an option to isolate. So if I select what I want to see, I can come down here to the sunglasses and hit isolate element, which is really fantastic. And now you can see I have this temporary height isolate in this blue window, which means everything that was selected is now isolated. And everything else is still existing, it's just not being shown because I did not select it previously. So I can go back here to the sunglasses, hit reset temporary hide. I'm going to cancel that, and we see that everything is back. So again, I'm going to select these two beams, go down to the sunglasses, hit Isolate Element, and I've got these two beams. It's very easy to work with. And I'm going to zoom in here, and so clearly we're not getting the connection we, get, we need, we want. It's not quite as real as we want. This is not actually how they're going to construct these beams. So the, with the, let's go back to the Modify tab and to the Coping, and if you're ever lost on tools and uh, basically what to do once you've started a, to use a tool in Revit, and I probably mentioned in this video, if you come down to the bottom left, it's going to give you some instructions. So the first thing it's asking us to do is first select the element we want to be coped. And so we want this element, this, this beam, to be coped. And again, if we come down here, look at the bottom left, 
for more instruction. It's now telling us for the second pick to select the column or framing which, which we want to use to cut. So right now it's going to be the second beam. So now we can see what it what it did. It was actually used this one side of the beam to cut basically how the beam would connect. And so there's a bit of a caveat to this because I'm going to undo that. So the caveat here is that if you know you're going to cope a beam in this case, you're going to want to actually extend it beyond the beam to where it what you see is kind of what you want. So basically, I, I, I want to see this connection fully fully together, just like that. So now if I go to the coping option, and again, selecting the first beam, beam that I would like to cope, and in this case selecting the second beam with which I want to use to cut, I can see I actually have a solid connection in there. I, there's nothing on the other side, and that the coping completed successfully, and now I, that looks as significantly more accurate. And so there's also the option to remove coping, which is just the same thing. If you look down here, you have the instructions of first selecting the element you want to remove the coping, which is this this element here. The second one, the the beam used to cut, and just like that, you're going to see that it removes the coping and the beam itself will then appear as just like you placed it. Alright, if you guys have any more questions regarding coping or anything that else that was covered in this video, whether it was isolating or hiding, shortcuts or not, please let me know in the comments. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next Revit Tools video.